our next is on the show tonight. Will, so good to see you. Uh, where in the world are you, are you joining us from at the moment? I'd love to tell you. Um, listen, my internet's a little shaky because I'm being observed by the government right now. It's why I'm in a windowless room. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I've just been... I got a few things. I'm in witness protection, James. <laughs> wow. Are, that's a, yeah. are you going to be there all summer? I, I, sure, I sure hope not. <laughs> I was thinking about you today, and I was thinking... I was actually thinking, and I mean this, I couldn't think of anyone better to summer with than Will Arnett. It would just be an absolute blast. What's summer Will Arnett like? He's very breezy. Yeah. Um, a lot of linens. Yeah. Oh, flowing. I mean, this is... I just did this button-up for the show. Usually, it's down to, you know... To the navel, yeah. And, yeah, but it's... it's ve he, he's very breezy. He likes to have a good time. Look, I've got a lot of kids now, so I'm kind of... You know, not, I'm a little out of my element, but I if I could, I would be a beast of 24-7. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'd be bringing back the foam party. Yeah, foam party's still big in Ibiza. Yeah, I think they still are. And I think that I, think that I would do really well in a foam party. 100%. <laughs> now, Will, Father's Day is this Sunday. Now, always difficult. Dads never seem to get the most exciting gifts. What, what sort of... What's, what sort of stuff do you end up with on a Father's Day? I mean, Father's Day, I get lots of great art from my kids, and they do lots of really nice gestures, and it's an awesome time. Generally, when it comes to just, you know, holidays in general, I, I, I don't get great gifts. I'm always, like, granddad in the corner with a tie and a scarf. Yeah. Um, so I usually kind of end up with... Although, at Christmas, this past Christmas, my girlfriend's parents, they gave me something that I will always... Ah, oh, man, I'm tearing up. Um, they gave me something that I will always cherish. They gave me... Uh, I opened up this big thing. What is this? And it's a big vinyl um, version of um, Who Let the Dogs Out by the Baja. Wow. Man. And also on vinyl, Tub Thumping by Chumbawamba. Oh! So, wow! Yeah. Because, you know, not unlike Chumbawamba... I get knocked down, <laughs> but I get up again. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Do you remember when that it's... came out, Tough Thumping? And for about a week, we all thought it was a brilliant song. <laughs> Just like, I remember hearing it and being like, this is as good a song as I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks a whiskey drink, he drinks a vodka drink, he drinks a lager drink, and then... It was, and then about three weeks after that, you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> Now, Will, we're in the middle of the European Championship group stages. Uh, you're a big uh, soccer fan. You're a big Liverpool fan. Have you been watching the, the Euros? I've been watching nonstop. Everything that I do on my days today, these days, is all about, like, what match is coming up. And I've got the kids on the schedule, too. They're like, we're, we're hungry, we want to eat. I'm like, hang on. We've got to watch, you know, uh, we've got to watch, you know, in Italy, Switzerland, all yeah. right? So just chill out for a second. You'll <laughs> eat in a bit. And... I'm so excited. All I want to do is watch it. And tomorrow is a huge day. Massive. Tomorrow is England, Scotland. Massive. It's going to be Massive. epic. We've actually shaped epic. And... our day around it here at work. <laughs> yeah, of course. Same here. And I'm nervous because here, here's the thing. Obviously, and I want to just say this because I want you to know, obviously my team is England. Um, but my, my guy, Andy Robertson, who oh, plays for Liverpool, he's so on good. Scotland. So good. He's so good. Yeah. So it's tough, but I mean, come on. I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm pulling for England all the way. Oh, good for you. We're thrilled to hear that. We're thrilled to hear that. Now, you're also, you're a huge sports fan and you love baseball. And before fans were allowed back in stadiums, you were actually at every Toronto Blue Jays home game. Here you are, just here. This is a cutout of you in the stadium. This is absolutely fantastic. You must have loved this, no? It was great. Yeah, well, you can see I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, <laughs> I, look very, I look very satisfied. I've kind of got my arms crossed. Like, <laughs> yeah. great attitude. Uh, and I'm, what's crazy is I'm there with... Look at look who I'm next to. That's Getty Lee from Rush. Rush, right? I know. I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. So, like, for me, that's like... 
that would be like for you the, the equivalent in the UK of like me, the piece of trash next to the Queen, because he is Canadian royalty. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Arrested Development, uh, I, I'm, I've told you that I'm such a huge fan of the show. It's the show that really kick-started your career. Do you what, do you... what do you remember about when you found out that you'd got this part? Well, uh, Mitch Hurwitz came out. I was at my final audition, and he came out in the hall. He goes, you got it, you got it. And I was like, shh, because right 10 feet away, Rain Wilson was there. No. And he hadn't even gone in yet. To read for like, your ah. part. Yeah, to read for the same part. And I'd been there in that position before, now, look, I don't feel too... Rain Wilson did, you know, 10 years of The Office, and he did very well, so sure. it's OK. But I'd been in that position before, and I was like... And I'm like, oh, man, it just it was the worst feeling. It was simultaneously the greatest moment and also the worst feeling. It's such a brilliant show, as is your show that you're here to talk about, which I think is so brilliant. Let's talk about Lego Masters. This is the second season, and the official tagline for the show is bigger and better. But I feel like the tagline should just be, let's blow up some Lego. Yeah. Because that's what, like, is it as much fun as it looks? I think it's so brilliant. Yeah, I, I mean, basically everybody just wants to watch you destroy stuff. Especially if you're a parent, you've built Lego, you're like, I want to get my, I want to get even with Lego a little bit. Yeah. So I want to smash it. And it, but it is so fun. We get to have, we have all these incredible builders from around the country who come in. You know, we're not one of those gotcha shows where, where we just get contestants all boozed up and watch them fight. We want people to do well. And we, we, so it's a really fun show. We want families to be able to watch together and have a good time. And that's, that's what makes the show so fun. I mean, you've, me and my son adore this show. It's so brilliant. And you've, this is now the second season of Lego Masters. You've been in three Lego movies. Did you ever think that Lego would be such a big part of your life and career? <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's absurd. Uh, I mean, when Phil Lord and Chris Miller called me to say, hey, we want to do this Lego movie years ago, we want you to be Batman, I was like, what are you talking... I don't understand the sentence you just said. <laughs> but I'm happy to do it. And now, all these years later, I've done three films and two series of Lego Masters, and it's just been an incredible... The fact that Lego is still such a huge part of my life, and really... I just took my kids... Yesterday, we went and my son just bought a Ferrari, like a Technic Ferrari. We bought... I'm not getting freebie Lego all the time, James. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm buying it. And... But you're brave, cos I tell you the truth, I'm terrified of Lego. I'm, I, it yeah. scares me so much, because I actually don't think there is anything more painful in life than if you kneel down on a piece of Lego. I actually think, like, that's what police and sort of special services should, should use to, like, interrogate people. You know when, like, they use, like, all these different techniques? They shouldn't... They should make them wear shorts and kneel down on a piece of Lego. People would give up everything. There is... There's no pain like it. So I actually applaud you for your bravery in a lot of this. That, that's what the Danish... Yeah, the Danish Secret Service do that. And <laughs> what they should also do is as a form of torture is to some of our enemies of the state, give them Lego sets, but take out a couple of the key pieces. Oh, uh, yeah. Some Ikea. That's Ikea-level stuff. Uh <laughs>